Um, I'm really excited. This uh, next talk is about celebrity as network, the new media buy. So we are getting a treat in that this gentleman who's going to share with us his vision and his visionary uh, experiences out in the world is the chairman and the CEO of PMK BNC, one of the largest, most influential communications, marketing, and consultancy firms in the world uh, for pop culture and entertainment. Uh, he is a 25-year-old year veteran. He's a 25-year-old. You're welcome, Michael. <laughs> he appreciates that. 25-year uh, veteran and operating with the most influential brands in the business from Pepsi and Samsung, Nicholas Sparks, Activision, CW Network, The X Factor, Condé Nast. He uh, closely monitoring the network and really we get to share what his findings are and, and how the future is moving forward. So without further ado, I'd like you to uh, turn this over to our guide for understanding the celebrity as network. Michael Nyman. Thank you, Amber. I know you guys are thinking, God, he looks old for 25. It's supposed to be a joke. All right. Amber's got a tough gig. Okay, this is uh, a little bit like speed dating, I think. Um, you guys have to uh, endure us for, for 20 minutes, and I have the unfortunate time slot of being the guy that comes up when everyone looks at their watch and says, oh shit, I gotta check out. So hopefully I can run through this in about 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and take some questions, or you guys can run and check out. Um, so this whole media buy, celebrity as a network, the, the new media buy theory, it's really a function of where habits, media, celebrity, and technology are colliding. So I'm gonna just uh, take you through, hopefully this works, there we go. Uh, I'm not gonna roll through the company. Amber um, spoke well of the company and me. And I'll talk a little bit about where we are today. Disruption, I think that's the theme for Natby. We're here, when I think about today, I think about uh, Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. I think we're, we're at that period right now. No one's really got the answers, and uh, there's a lot of people that are hoping and praying, but um, right now we're all just trying to, trying to hold on. So how do we hold on? How do we feel good about the job that we're doing? Uh, you know, I think terminology and, and uh, metrics such as what you're seeing up there make everyone feel a little bit better, a little more comfortable. And I don't have all the answers, but I know I understand CPMs. I know I need ROI. Oh, I know there's going to be a long tail. You know, all these, all these warm and fuzzy things that, that, uh, that make us feel better. Uh, but in the end, it's, it's really... It's not the answer, it's just helping us, again, just sort of hold on. Uh, as far as the audience, forget holding on. We all can agree that we've got a huge amount of segmentation, way too many choices. Um, everyone talks about the democratization of media. Uh, everyone wants something for free. The consumer habits are changing. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I have two teenage kids at home. Um, they are easily three screens from probably seven or eight o'clock on. And uh, it just, it's just hard to get anyone's attention for any length of time. So a lot's happened in the, in the 60 years uh, since the golden age of television. And I wanted to just tell a quick story and play a little video, because I figured everyone's got to show a little video. Uh, but the point really is about, if, if you look at the theory of celebrity as, as the new media buy, that you know, back in the golden age of television, it wasn't just the fact that that uh, you know the medium was was there. It was that the consumer was ready to just absorb whatever message was coming to them. And in a sense, the paid, earned, owned. It didn't really matter if you were told something by an advertisement, you took it. I had this. This is a true story. I had a discussion with my my father-in-law about coming down to Miami. And he said, uh, in 1970, I was reading GQ magazine, 
And, you know, I read about the best car in the world coming to America. I said, really? He said, yeah, it was an Audi. I said, so what'd you do? He said, well, I grabbed the, the magazine and I ripped out the ad and I walked down to, or I drove to the uh, Boston dealership, they're living in Boston, and I bought an Audi. And I said, why'd you do that? He said, because the ad said it was the best car in the world. No joke. So not only do we have this simplified message uh, medium and, and messaging, but we had a consumer that was just ready to accept on face value. Why would this ad lie to me? So I'm just going to show you this 90 seconds, and you're going to see how we've come from sort of a slow, deliberate, almost educational um, ad environment to where we are today, which is I'm going to entertain you. I'm going to have fun. It might be a little cynical. And oops, I hope you can see we've got our brand in there, and you're, you're going to get it. Um, this is just, you know, we, we can't attract the consumer any other way. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's cue that. Hang on. Okay. This is the coffee pot at work. Tastes as good as it smells. New country cars. New country cars. When there's no man around. Goodyear should be. The one car designed with a woman in mind. Even boil it, and the Band-Aid plastic strip never comes loose. The Remington is so gentle that it can shave the short, close fuzz off a peach. You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. Bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, we're a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? That didn't happen in rehearsal. This is the coffee pot at work. Tastes as good as it smells. <laughs> New country cars, New country cars, When there's no man around, Goodyear should be. The one car designed with a woman in mind. Even boil it, and the Band-Aid plastic strip never comes loose. The Remington is so gentle that it can shave the short, close fuzz off a peach. You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. Bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, we're a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Oh, yeah. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke! Get into it. What letters mean kisses and hugs? X's and O's. Yes! Go buy a bag. I will tell you that my E-Trade savings account earns eight times the national average. Stuck between a bad job and a hard place? You notice maybe you clipped me a little bit there? Careerbuilder.com. Who said salads can't be hot? Only at Carl's Jr. <sighs> What's going on over there? All right. Sorry about that. We lost about 30 seconds there on that retake. But you could see how literal, how slow, how you know, educational like these ads were all the way to where we are today, which is hoping and praying that we can, you know, a marketer can, can capture and, or hold someone's attention for, for 30 seconds. So how do, how do we get here? I'm going to just go quickly through a few critical time periods starting in the 50s. I'm going to take you through sort of the traditional lens, the traditional media buying lens, and then what was happening in the non-traditional world. Because what I ultimately want to do is I want to show how the traditional media buying collided with the non-traditional and, and will birth what I believe will happen with the celebrity network. So in the 50s, you had uh, about, I think it was more than 60% of the uh, folks in America were watching TV uh, regularly. Uh, obviously, TV was the dominant uh, uh, format, which I think hit in the mid-50s finally overreached uh, uh, movie theaters. And um, 
in the non-traditional place, uh, I think a lot of people uh, forget that there was a lot happening, that you had sponsored television. Even though television wasn't on for 24, it was usually between 12, maybe 18 hours. Uh, you had, you had uh, shows like Texaco Star Theater with an audience of 30 million. Then we move up to the 80s, and again, television is holding its own. Lots of, lots, you know, huge amount of spend there. U.S. population uh, pops up to, to uh, 238 million. We've got the, really the advent of cable at that point. I think 80, over 80% 80 of America is watching television daily. And then we've got the remote control happening now. So consumers starting to seize control. And then in the, uh, the non-traditional area, you saw a reference to it. But we started to watch the celebrity endorsements come to fruition, the uh, big music uh, tour sponsorships, uh, big acts going on the road and being sponsored, uh, ET debuting in 81. And then in the early 2000s, we had the first sign of trouble, right? So we've got like five years post-internet commercialization. So the disruption is starting. And uh, now advertisers are really starting to be sort of stretched. How are we gonna, how are we gonna make good on, on, on this? How are we gonna be able to you know, uh, get someone's attention, create an image, and do a call to action? You know, it's just media is too expensive to do everything. So we had, uh, again, further, further um, further work being done in the non-traditional area, more money being poured into that, uh, into that area. Uh, we've got uh, uh, product integration heavily into, into reality now. Um, obviously, um, you know, we've got viral marketing. Uh, I think more than 20% of the ads uh, on television were featuring celebrities. And then we've got a present time, which we're all living here and now. Uh, television, in, television is still the majority buy. U.S. population is 315, but I'm sure you, you've all heard now by now there's about 425 million devices connected to the internet. Uh, obviously, texting is everywhere. Everyone's got apps. Um, you know, all of a sudden, we also know that people are paying. Marketers are paying more for less, more money for less people. You hear the discussion about I'd rather have the 25 to 49 year old or the 18 to 49 old on. Uh, 18 to 49 year old audience than the boomer audience, no offense. Uh, and then new measurement standards have taken effect, the live plus three, you've got uh, bundled ad buys, and then of course you've got tremendous amount happening in the non-traditional area, proliferation of social media. We're up to about 30 hours per week on, t on celebrity and entertainment oriented television shows right now. Not, so this isn't even counting online, but we are dominated by celebrity and entertainment. Go to your, reg your newsstand around the corner. The magazines that are left are featuring celebrities, if not in the magazine, on the covers. And celebrities have, have morphed from spokespeople into ambassadors. Okay, so where does that all lead us right now? So my notion is that you take the traditional media buying and everything that's happening in the non-traditional world and, the, and just the trend that is happening with the way the consumers are behaving and the fact that they're just not interested so I believe it's going to morph into celebrity as a network. So what's that going to look like? <laughs> it might look a lot like this. And we'll come back to the logos in a minute. So here's, my, here's hopefully the payoff. Right now, I, will, I believe that the network would be comprised of four platforms. So if you wanted to buy, uh, you wanted to buy through a celebrity, you would go and you'd be you'd be buying with this network, and through that network, you would have four platforms to uh, entertain buying. You could get all of them, bundle them all together, or you could get one. So you have your digital destination, which would be more static, more for the fans. I want to go to the website. I want to dig in, and I want to be there for a while. The video library, YouTube is the dominant platform there. Mobile, no problem. You can communicate on the fly. Uh, 140 characters, you've got Twitter. And then, obviously, social, hang out a bit and, and, and be in a community, be in a celebrity, uh, a community of a celebrity on Facebook. Then, in addition to that, you still have the non-traditional lens. So you can go, you'll be able to buy the celebrity as a network, but then you also have that opportunity to still do the non-traditional work. You want to do PR, spokesperson programs, you want to do endorsements, personal appearances, you still have that option. But now the celebrity will be able to have the yin and the yang, traditional, and non-traditional. The, uh, the new audience, I believe, will be more a function of least committed to most commuted. So viewers or listeners to followers to friends to fans. 
Okay, so what does that look like? Now, these numbers are not audited, and please don't go nuts or quote me on anything like this. I did not talk to Shaq. I didn't talk to Rihanna. I didn't talk to anyone that I'm using. I just want to put these people up merely as examples to understand how far-reaching they're going. So here's Shaq, and you, anyone could find these numbers. Uh, here's Rihanna, huge amount on the Twitter side and Facebook. Same with Kim Kardashian, it's staggering. I mean, really, really huge numbers. So what's missing to go from today uh, to where, you know, where we are to the Celebrity Network? Um, you know, I, I contend that it's really just a function of everyone getting aligned. So what do I mean by that? That we can get agreement on on uh, these types of these types of issues surrounding audience, platforms, valuation, celebrity differentiation, and programming information. There's just no industry standards right now. I went back. If you go back to the beginning when I was talking about the things that make people feel comfortable, is this idea of CPMs. You know, even if you don't know how effective it is, you know that you got a certain rate and somehow, by according to your standards, it's a good buy. You're, make, you know, you're, not, you're not losing money, that it was, it was money well spent. So we've got to get alignment on all this in order for it to come to fruition. Make a 30-second pitch at, at my company. We've been working with a research uh, partner in, in the last year and a half, two years, on developing something called Fan DNA, which really is all about f uh, finding answers to get appropriate alignment between the celebrity and the brands. Uh, and we really do this by looking at brand profiles, consumer behaviors, brand attributes, and celebrities, uh, and, their, and their fan profile. So if you were going to make a buy, you just wouldn't want to buy any or ordinary time. You might want to buy a network or a television show. I submit to you the same thing with the celebrity as a network. You're not just going to buy any old celebrity. You want to buy, buy uh, the right celebrity network. Just a couple comparisons. Obviously, you can spend a 30-second ad on the Oscars, be roughly 1.7 million. You're going to reach 40 people, and it'll be done like that. Or you can spread out your money. You could spend a million bucks. You'd reach uh, a cumulative number of 650 million uh, by using Shaq's uh, formula of 100 tweets for a million bucks. Kim Kardashian, same thing. It's staggering. You can reach an audience of 510 million. Now, the neat thing here is with the Celebrity Network, you have the ability to spread. So you can focus on impact, influence, you can focus on spread, you know, basically messaging over time versus a traditional television, which would be in the moment and quick. Uh, and then I just wanted to showcase Pepsi, not because we work with them, but I do think that they've really nailed the non-traditional side. Uh, and I think if you look at the, uh, what was reported about their $50 million deal with Beyonce, focusing on all the uh, non-traditional channels and platforms, uh, and you can look up here, I don't need to read it to you. I think it's going to be a tremendously smart buy for them, a very strong play, and I think they will have uh, great affinity with their consumers, get great attention, and, um, and I, think, I think really think it's perfect alignment. All right, so I actually think it's closer than we think. I know there's been news while we've been down here about uh, Twitter and, uh, and Nielsen. Uh, Every day I pick up the newspaper and I see this, I see all this activity that's slowly, slowly getting alignment. People are getting their arms around and figuring out research, the research it's gonna to take to make sure that this, that this comes to fruition. So I say come into your screen by 2020. I don't know, does anyone know these logos? We've got LeBron, Kardashian, Shaq, Will I Am, Beyonce, and Rihanna, and I submit to you that those will be as common to, uh, to recognize as NBC, ABC, and CW. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michael. That was fantastic. Are you opening it up to questions? We have a minute. All right, 58, fantastic. 57, 56, no. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of I got high heels on. Hi, it's uh, Kevin with Digital LA. Uh, yeah, great presentation about how these celebs are building these huge audiences, but what's the next step as far as leveraging their audience power via social media, et cetera, to actually uh, monetize or uh, do social media for a startup or do ads? Like, what's the, what's the end goal there for the celeb? Well, no, I, I think it's already happening, and, and depending on what celebrity you're looking at and what type of management or what type of infrastructure they've got, they're all working. I just saw something I thought in the daily, Nappy Daily today 
about how celebrities, or someone was, was quoted in a presentation how celebrities are working overtime to be able to show their value. Um, so I think there's various forms of that going on right now. Again, I just think that we just haven't gotten alignment, like what's the acceptable standard? So everyone's going to come forward and say, here's what I think, and, and come up with like a best practice. But until the industry can rally around and say, I feel comfortable with that standard of measurement, and I feel comfortable about uh, analyzing audience or impact, it's just, it's just, it's just going to be one person's word against, against another, and that's what's going to keep it in that non-traditional world. Great. Next question. Yeah. Yes, my name is Tina. I'm from Sweden. Uh, I would like to know, uh, what's your analyze behind this uh, focus on celebrities? Why are they becoming more and more important? Well, they get attention. And uh, if you look at the shift in our demographics now, too, it's not just all of America, but if, if you look at the younger set, the population, we're like an accordion right now with our population. You've got the oldest or the largest segment is baby boomers, and the second largest, is, I think, is like under 25. So part of it is just the nature of the demographic. And, and certainly on the younger side, this is where people get their social cues. This is what, what they're interested in talking about and what they're hearing about. People just want to be part of the conversation. And certainly in America, celebrities and these pop cultural moments are driving the conversation. And the brands just want to jump on and be part of that conversation. And the ones that are the best brand marketers are the ones that are saying, we're going to drive that conversation. We're not just going to be part of it. So. Well, they are. They already are doing it on on YouTube. So I think that's well well underway. So, but but what I'm saying, celebrities and network, it is more of a a uh, not not a literal as much as a a uh, metaphor for the media by network. So. Yeah, one else? more question okay. over here. So millennial behavior um, with celebrity is different than Gen X, is different than baby boomer celebrity, and millennials are de demanding this authentic relation with celebrity. So the moment a celebrity has someone else interacting with the audience instead of themselves, there's that very fine line and they can lose it. Do you, how do you deal with that as the celebrity brand grows? Who's managing the celebrity relationship with millennials? Yeah, well, no, it's, I think hopefully it bodes well for companies like us because once a celebrity commits and wants to go on, all in on the traditional channel as well as the non-traditional channel, they have ideals and values that they need to uphold. So they are gonna have to do their own exercise, just like a brand would, in understanding their brand essence. The celebrity is going to have to do the same thing, and they're going to have to develop a thick skin and a backbone, and they're going to have to stick and stay stay on a course. They can't be zigging and zagging because there's no way people are going to invest unless that they know that they can depend on that celebrity uh, acting and behaving in the manner in which that they're promoting themselves. That's a good question. Is that Brian? That's Brian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much, Michael Nyman. All right, our next session is literally starting in seven minutes, six minutes. So uh, 